Hi everybody, I'm Zillow Blitz and welcome. Today we're gonna to review Lock and Load Publishing's Tank on Tank series. Now there are two games and two expansions in this series. Tank on Tank West Front, Tank on Tank East Front are the two standalone core modules. And then we have two expansion packs, one for each of the core modules. Defenders of the Rhine matches up with Tank on Tank West Front and Red Storm in the Valley matches up with Tank on Tank East Front. Uh, the expansion packs have maps and scenarios and a couple of rule mechanics that are added onto core gameplay. Now this series is designed as an introductory World War II tactical combat series, especially designed for younger war gamers or for introducing someone to hex encounter war games. So when we look at this and we talk a little bit about the review, we're gonna kind of concentrate on really kind of two broad categories. One is how does this stand up as a war game for experienced war gamers, and then how does it work as its intended tool, which is to introduce younger war gamers or inexperienced war gamers to hex and counter war games. Let's start with the latter. How does this work as a teaching tool, as a game to introduce people to wargaming? Well, I think this is a fantastic tool for that purpose. I can see this being used with younger kids, say 10 years old and up, or perhaps even some precocious eight or nine year olds I think could be able to handle this. This is a very playable, distilled, tactical combat system that still leaves a lot of interesting tactical decisions and some hard thinking to make as you're playing through the game. So I think it's, it's hit that sweet spot in complexity and simplicity that makes it work really well for a Hex Encounters teaching tool. One of the other things I like about this in particular as an introductory war game is that I've played a number of easier war games now, and often they're easier, they're almost like games about war, but they're not necessarily kind of that traditional Hex Encounters war gaming system teaching tools. This is Hex Encounters gaming at a simplified level that works really, really well for introducing people to the hobby. The, you've still got a lot of core mechanics for tactical combat. You have line of sight, you've got movement, of course, you've got terrain effects, you've got you know, defensive values on units, uh, firepower is there with the advanced rule that comes in with the expansion sets. So there's a lot of interesting tactical decisions that you're making, and yet at the same time, the cold rule set is about three, four pages in all. You can learn this in about, I would say, you could learn this probably in a half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe that, and you'd be ready to play. From open the box to you're ready to play, I'm gonna say about 30 to 45 minutes. But you could teach someone this system probably about 10 to 15 minutes. It's really easy to teach. So I think if you've got kids at home or you have kids you wanna to introduce to Hex Encounters Wargaming that you think might be interested in it, in particular, I think this is gonna be great for them. This will also work, I think, really well for adults that you might have, coming from a Euro background, that might be interested in it. You don't wanna overwhelm them with something that's too heavy. This is almost a very good kind of transitional step before they move off into something that would be more complex. The second question that we wanna look at is how does this work for experienced wargamers? Either if you're thinking about playing the system solo or if you're thinking about playing a two player with somebody else. Um, I would be reluctant to recommend this series for experienced wargamers to want to play head to head or solo. You can certainly do it and it works really well as a solo system, giving the activation order system, which I think is actually a very simple mechanic that introduces a lot of fun decision making into the game. Again, kind of highlighting how they've hit that sweet spot between leveraging the rules to make the game have a lot of interesting decisions on a very light rule set. You know, you could have had a simple, similar complexity, but the game wouldn't just be interesting to play. But there's a lot of fun decisions that I think you're making with this. But having said that, I think experienced wargamers are going to feel in a couple of ways it's going to be, you would want more. Uh, first up, uh, you know, the lack of things like morale, the lack of things like command and control and leaders and things like that create some situations where it, it breaks away quite a bit from a simulation feel into kind of very much a, a game kind of feel. You know, even if you think back to the, if you watched the episode, maybe we showed a gameplay episode of this, you know, five of the six German tanks were wiped out, but that six tank is just driving on. You know, it's just, it's going for broke. It's gonna win the whole battle by itself. And realistically, you know, once the Germans had lost like four, three or four of their tanks, they're probably considering pulling out of that battle, you know, if they have if they have heavy losses. So it gets kind of a, a, a gamey feel to it that I think, it, you know, it does a great job with its simplified rule set, but it has somewhat of a gamified feel to it that I think is going to leave someone who's looking for a simulation-esque 
experience of tactical World War Combat, looking for some of the, the more complicated modules and the complicated games that are out there. And then going hand in hand with that is that just general lack of complexity. You know, it is a simplified rule set. I think if you're used to experienced war games, you're gonna, walk, you're gonna want more than what this game has to offer. Um, and then part of that that's in there too is that I think luck plays a pretty big role here. So uh, more so than in a traditional war game, you know, this has some pretty big swings. A lot of the hits are kind of 40%, 50%, 60% range. So you're gonna see games that have a pretty big swing to based, on, based on a few good dice rolls. And that, that, it, that, I think that's a really nice mechanic for younger gamers and for people learning how to play because a weaker player is gonna be able to beat a stronger player in that system um, on occasion. But I think that if you're an experienced war gamer, I think you want something with a higher tactical leverage. Now that's not to say there's not a ta lot of tactics and thinking that goes on in here. Um, you've got com you know, headquarter units that you have to figure out how to use. In particular, when you don't know how many activations you're gonna get, you have to prioritize very early on in the turn what your two most important orders are and how to act them, you know, act on those. So I think as you're learning wargaming, those are really interesting systems to be thrown at you. You don't know how many orders you're gonna get, how many activations you're gonna get, two, three, or four. Have to learn how to prioritize those really interesting decisions there and yet the sum of all those decisions to me feels like something that it leaves me wanting as an experienced wargamer so i don't think i would break this out and play it solo on my own i don't think i would suggest this um, as a two-player game to exp for experienced wargamers i think we would want something a little bit more a um, little bit more complex and deep Having said that, I do think if you are playing with adult and want something a lighter fare, you know, this, the, one of the benefits to this, in addition to its youth, use as a teaching tool, is you often don't want to overwhelm someone with a really long game when you're teaching and when you're kind of introducing it. This is a game, it's a one evening type of thing. So you could open up this box brand new, have it set up and be learning how to play in like a half an hour, maybe 35 minutes, and you're gonna be able to play a scenario in under an hour. So that's also really helpful when you're teaching systems to new people and introducing people. You want something you can move through briskly, something you can play fast and something you can have a lot of fun with, maybe even getting two or perhaps even three games in in one sitting. So it's definitely a single single evening experience. So perhaps as an experienced wargamer, if you are looking for that type of lighter kind of beer and pretzels type experience, and you don't have a lot of time, this could be a good filler for that too. Now, the last thing I would say too, is that I'd like to make a little bit of a distinction over what I would recommend if you're buying this for uh, to introduce a younger player to the system, or if you're buying it to introduce, thinking about using it to introduce friends to Hex Encounters Wargaming. I would probably recommend one of the modules if you're starting with a kid to introduce. You've got one of your kids wants to learn how to play. Just get one of the two and then see how they like it. But I could see kids really getting into the East Front and the West Front, making their own scenarios because there's a whole system for doing that. Some of the elements of the expansion that had more maps and more scenarios and things like that. There's a scenario in here for Kelly's Heroes, the movie. Scenarios are really creatively done. There's a lot of them. A lot of designers kind of toss their hat in the ring to make them for this game. So it's just got this really kind of wide variety of experiences and fightings and battles and all that kinds of stuff in here. So it's a wonderful set of scenarios that's got a lot of depth to it. And I could see in particular, kids who like this game just kind of really get getting lost in this, you know, playing all the scenarios, making up their own scenarios, in which case get one and then see how it goes and then add on to it based on that. For uh, teaching an adult how to play, I would recommend getting one of the two modules and then perhaps one of the expansions. And these, one of the nice things too about this system is it's, it's very moderately priced from what I can tell on the Lock and Load Publishing site. So it's not a heavy outlay of cash to be able to get these. So you, I would recommend a module and one of the expansion packs. I would recommend the expansion pack because in the base game, there is no uh, distinguish. There's no distinguishing between attack power of units. So uh, a, a Sherman has exactly the same offensive firepower as, say, a Pershing or a heavier U.S. tank. Likewise, a Panzer IV has the same offensive firepower as a Tiger. The range might be different, but the offensive firepower is the same. So that's a little bit of an, the, the distinguishing elements of the units in the base game are their defensive values and movement and range and things like that, but not attack power. The 
expansions fix that. They add a, a caliber model to the armored units in the game, small caliber, medium caliber, large caliber. And there's quite a bit of difference in offensive firepower between those three categories. And that rule set and that player's aid is in the expansion pack. For introducing adults to that, I think that's really nice to have. I would almost be encouraged to start that, maybe play one game without it, but then introduce it really quickly because I think that adds a new dimension to the gameplay, especially if you're gonna be trying to teaching adults how to play that really gonna click with adults. It's a really cool system that adds in that kind of strength of offensive firepower in a very simple and elegant way. So I would recommend that. I probably wouldn't recommend getting both systems for an adult because I think as an adult learning it, you're probably gonna be able to play maybe three, four, five times. And then I would probably think that as adults, you're probably gonna to wanna to move to something a little bit more complex. So that's kind of a recommended path for what I would suggest might work really well with this. In terms of other things to mention, uh, components are nice. It's got the thicker cardboard uh, maps. I'm not a super huge fan of those, but I don't think this makes sense to have it on mounted maps. And I think paper would be a little bit, this is better than paper for sure. I would probably lay down some plexiglass, plexiglass on the maps if I'm gonna be playing up when I wasn't filming so I wouldn't have the glare and stuff like that uh, because it does get slightly bumpy. But again, the units are big. The hexes are big, you know, there's only one unit per hex, so it's a very visual experience. It's easy to manipulate, so it's by far not hard at all to play given the types of components. Counters are great, nice, thick, big counters. Rules are really clear, and again, it's a really simplified rule set. Scenario variety is, is really strong in here too. So, to kind of sum all that up, I think this makes an awesome, if you're looking to get something for to introduce kids, who might be interested in Hex Encounters war, game as a, war Games as a stepping stone to that bigger category, I think this would work really well. I think it also works really well for adults for that same purpose. And I, I would have reservations on recommending it to experienced wargamers as a standalone experienced wargamer versus experienced wargamer or solo mode for experienced wargamers to play. And with that, thanks so much for watching everybody. I'd love to hear your comments and questions down below. Have a great day and we'll see you in a new video soon.